Hey guys and girls, my name's Dan and welcome back to The Forge. In this episode of Trust Me I'm a Blacksmith, I'm going to be a welder fabricator. So in this video I'm going to go over how I earn money and a little bit about my past and how I learned how to weld basically. Um, now I did an apprenticeship as a mechanical engineer, um, I did it for about seven years, uh, well not my apprenticeship, I worked as a mechanic for about seven years um, and then I left that job because it's a dirty horrible job especially fixing bulldozers on landfill sites uh, and then I came to the realisation that I'd like to be a blacksmith. I wanted to get a qualification in it or do an apprenticeship. And finding an apprenticeship was difficult, so I did the degree course at Hereford College of Arts, which I found very interesting. I learnt lots, I met lots of interesting people. Hopefully I'm going to go on and meet more interesting people. And then um, I sort of turned up here, hoping that this would be my full-time job. But it's not. Um, well, it is. This is what I class myself as. But um, I work for another guy um, with sort of this in mind. Um, the degree I did was an artist blacksmith's degree at Hereford College of Arts. Uh, it's based around making artistic ironwork, um, or metalwork, or sculpture, or whatever you want to call it. Um, and um, I met this guy who asked me to do uh, an inspective job on a piece of metalwork, basically based on my previous engineering background and also my skills as a metal worker, sensitive to art. Um, so I went along and it, it went well, uh, he asked me to do another job and subsequently over the last five years I've worked for him more and more and basically I work for him part time now. Um, and one of the things, I, one of the aspects of work that I get off him is metal working for applications. So I'll make brackets or special hinges or hooks or, um, or basically all sorts of different things for different applications for art sensitive museum work based um, jobs um, and one of the little jobs I've got in the workshop today is I need to make some of these brackets not these brackets these are too flimsy and they are rubbish and this bit isn't what they wanted um, but basically I've got to make an L-shaped bracket um, that is going to go on a wall and hold a really old cool collapsible ladder up but this video is to talk about welding fabricating um, and one of the elements of welding fabricating I'm going to talk about today is because I'm going to do some is um, what type of welder to use and what type of welder to buy for your first welder in the workshop. So if you're looking at getting a welder and you think the MIG's the option to go down, I would dissuade and discourage you not to and I would try and convince you to look at an inverter. Um, this particular inverter does MIG and TIG. Um, now, I have all three types of welders in the workshop. Um, I can do gas, oh well, most types of welders at least anyway. I can do gas welding here. Uh, I have a MIG welder, I have uh, a standard inverter, DC inverter, and I also have a DC AC inverter. Um, now, I can pretty much weld anything here, pretty much, not everything, but most things. Um, and this little thing here that I've had for five years, this little 160 amp welder, uh, cost me about £650 plus VAT, um, but I also uh, I you can also get just a normal standard stick inverter uh, for about £250 um, plus the VAT. I think you pay about $350 to $400 um, for your just your standard inverter. But with the TIG option on, I think you pay probably $800 and the same on the continent, about €800. Euros. Now, why preach so heavily about, stick, um, about inverters? Um, there are a couple of reasons. Um, their versatility. They're very light. This comes out on site with me quite a bit. This one's quite light as well. I can lift this one on my own. Um, I can lift it in and out of a vehicle quite easily, um, but I, know I don't need to. But this one comes out on site with me. Um, it can stick weld and it can uh, it can TIG weld. Um, it doesn't have very many parts in it, um, therefore there's less to go wrong. You're not you haven't got a wire reel going around there. You not don't have wire going up a gun and all that sort of thing. Um, and um, the quality 
of the actual physical ability of the world, not the look, is more often than not a lot easier to achieve with MMA and TIG as opposed to MIG. Lots of people can make beautiful MIG worlds, but whether or not that world is any good um, really does depend on uh, really does depend on the person doing the MIG welding. I would suggest that someone starting out should start with stick, then move on to TIG, and then afterwards progress on to MIG, um, or even start with gas welding. Um, the reason being is that um, the penetration that you can get with um, rods, these, elect certain, these electrodes, and also the TIG is much higher than with MIG in circumstances, depending on the circumstances. Um, so, Basically, this will do stick welding. It will do stainless steel rods. It will do cast rods. It will do um, it will do brass. It does um, all sorts of all sorts of wonderful rods and high carbon and high um, high tensile rods, um, hard facing rods. You name it, it'll do it. It'll put it in. And same with the TIG, that will take all sorts of rods as well. Um, meaning you can weld lots of different things, especially if um, you can also do lots of different sizes with these inverters. MIG welders, my MIG welder is quite a big MIG welder and I tend to really struggle to do thinner material with it um, but anything like up from like 6 all the way up to about 20 mil, it's okay with anything over 20 mil it starts struggling with. Um, whereas this bad boy, um, the TIG welder will do little tiny beads of like nothingness material um, and um, the stick welder will help me stick together you know, 10 mil, 12 mil pieces of plate. Um, so it's very, 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 very versatile, especially out on site. Also, artistically, I can use the TIG welder to do blending in and stuff like that. Um, now, I can hear people going, oh, but it's really hard to TIG weld. It's not really hard to TIG weld. Um, there's some great tutorials online, uh, Mr. TIG, for example, and there's another guy, I'm sorry I've forgotten your name, but I will chuck it down in the link. So, um, value for money, productivity, and versatility. Yeah, pay a bit more money, get yourself a unit that does MIG, uh, that does uh, MMA and TIG, you will not regret it, I guarantee it. And once you learn to TIG weld, you'll really enjoy it. I, really, I promise you, you'll really enjoy it. Um, the other thing I was going to say is, um, if you're buying MIG, we're going to be running gas anyway, so there's no, you know, yeah, you've got like a gas bottle around, or you've got to build a table or a trolley for your gas to go on for your MIG welder, but, you know, small compromises for versatility. Um, and yes, I do know that you can run stainless steel and aluminium in standard MIG welders, but they're rubbish. I've tried it, they're rubbish. They don't work as well. Stainless steel, every time I pick this up over, you know, your bog standard, um, or even, even stainless steel sticks. I mean, I like to use stainless steel. If I have to weld a bar onto something, I like to use stainless steel rods. They are far tougher and they work a lot harder than just your bog standard mild steel ones like these. So, um, I'm going to put a little clip together of me doing some little hooks um, that happened earlier on today and um, they're here. Um, I'll put a little clip together of me doing that and um, I'll see you on the other side.
Uh, so there's these little bent up um, part welded bad boys. They're all finished. Um, they need a lick of paint. Um, four of them done. They turned out absolutely lovely. I'm really pleased with them. They're really going to be really pleased with them at the museum where this is going. Um, they're going to hold up a ladder. Um, they're substantially chunkier and more manly than the ones that um, they used and um, they'll be able to stick a little bit of uh, plaster so in there to protect the very old school collapsible portable ladder thingy. So uh, yeah, really happy. I hope you got something out of that video, uh, maybe some little tips and tricks for fabbing. I'm not interested in putting fabbing up here on the channel very much, but I'll do it when I think it's important. I really wanted to talk about the welders. Um, and TIG welding in particular, which I quite enjoy. Um, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, remember like and subscribe, it really helps. Uh, and um, I will chuck a video up here um, of me making something, and then another video here of me doing another thing. So uh, thanks for watching, guys. See you later. Bye bye.